Welcome back to the show, South Africa. As you can see, the studio is bare. We've had to remove all of our guests to make sure that our next guest feels as comfortable mm -hmm. and as safe as possible. We'd like to introduce you to the famous, the beautifully intelligent, oh, the one and only Joseph. I don't know whether I should speak or sit still or just move my eyes from my body. <laughs> Hello, this is Joseph. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we've welcomed our next guest. His name is Joseph and he's a 12-year-old male, full-grown cheetah, born and bred in captivity. Mm -hmm. Indeed, and if you look very carefully, you can hear he's purring, which means he's happy to join us. Oh, he's happy to join us. Okay, so he is happy, so I can... So you can relax. I can calm down. Okay. <laughs> Things are safe. He looks so soft and fluffy, and I'm hoping one just now when he's been a little more comfortable, we can give him a pat. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Tell us more about Joseph's yes. story. Well, Joseph, as you said, was born in captivity, and he's been hand raised since three, well, since about four weeks, and he came to us at three and a half months. Mm -hmm. So he was born in a society's registered breeding program for these cats. They are a highly endangered species. We are. Um, Looking at only about 7,000 left of them in the world, wow. most of them in sub-Saharan Africa. So Joe's with us as an ambassador okay. to raise awareness and get people involved in their conservation. Very exciting. Tell us a little bit about his siblings, because uh, I believe that he has two siblings. He did have two siblings. Okay. He was raised with um, Kai and Byron at our facility. Byron is still an ambassador up north at the breeding program where they were born, the Anne van Dyke Cheetah Centre. And Kaya, the um, brother, unfortunately, he was always a very sickly cat. And he, you can walk in if you want. And he, unfortunately, um, died when he was six mm. and a half from quite Shame. a bad disease. Okay. And I noticed he's liking to do the walking around. And you mentioned to me that cheetahs don't have a very good sense of smell because um, they usually, many use their sight and hearing. Yes, they are a day hunter, so mm -hmm. sight and hearing are very important to them. Sense of smell is more for a night hunter because they can't see in all so well okay. in the dark. Um, Joseph, though, is a very curious animal. You've heard, yeah. you've heard the yeah. saying, curiosity kills yeah. the cat. Yeah. Well, we hope curiosity in this studio doesn't kill the cat, because we still want him around to <laughs> spread the good news about how we can, how we can get involved in, in conserving our cheetahs in, in the world. And how can we as lay people, as public, get involved in trying to help this cause? Well, basically, there's a number of re ways we look after them. Um, public awareness facilities always support them. Um, be aware of what you do, what you spend your money on. Um, the biggest threat to cheetah are, unfortunately, livestock farmers because they are predator yeah. and their ideal habitat is open grassland, mm -hmm. which is ideal farmland. There is conflict. Farmers lose up to 30% of their livestock every year to predators. Yeah. So they are trying to costly. support themselves and support. It's our food. It's mm -hmm. our, you know, those meatballs come yeah. from the farm. <laughs> Tell us a bit more about the organization that you work for. So I work for Cheetah Outreach. Mm -hmm. It was established over 17 years ago to raise awareness for this animal. And we do education programs. We work with the livestock farmers to guard their livestock from all predators so that they don't feel the need to go out and poison or trap. And we place a very special dog called an Anatolian Shepherd with the livestock. And they will guard that livestock from all predators, including the two-legged kind, the oh, poacher. Yeah, yeah. And then, so the farmer's not losing livestock, he can then share his land with these predators. So we raise awareness, we work a lot with school kids, doing um, education resources and programs with kids to raise awareness of what's happening with our wildlife, how important they are to our economy in terms of the tourism trade, and then, you know, what kids can do to start being aware of what's happening with our wildlife and what they as individuals can do to help protect it. Well, I found quite interesting what you said to me earlier on uh, before the live show, which you said, uh, obviously, when Joseph comes in, he's more afraid of us than I think, than I think we realise. Uh, and it's to kind of be aware that he's not this vicious predator who's out there to, to eat humans, but if you do <laughs> scare him, he, he will... He will run. Yeah, he will run. Um, cheetahs are non-aggressive. You can see they're very lean. He's a little bit fat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're very lean, very light for running. This is the fastest animal on land. Everything about him has been built for the speed. He's got a small jaw, streamlined yes. head. Yes. You can see his claws are out. So they, they yeah. for traction grip, on the ground, yes. for grip, so they're blunt. He's got long, thin bones, and he doesn't carry a lot of muscle. So he's a very bad fighter. Yes. So other big predators can injure him. And if he gets injured, he can't run. Mm, okay. So he look at a big predator, and he sees something as a threat. Mm -hmm. We are big because we stand tall. Yes, okay. Although some of us might not be as heavy as them, mm -hmm. They still perceive us to be a bigger, bigger threat to How them. How much do they weigh about? 
A male weighs between 45 and 55 kilograms, sometimes oh. up to 60. Yo, I'm heavier than him, eh? <laughs> yeah. I go to gym. Okay, do, do you mind if we try and give him a bit of a pick? Because yes, it's absolutely. been a dream of mine always to what you pet do? a cheetah. Come behind me here, okay. next to Yogi. Just go down on your horn just like Yogi is sitting. Okay. And you can stroke him along his back and sides. And what is the life expectancy of a, of a cheetah like this? Um, in captivity, we're looking about 10 to 12 years. But we are very fortunate at Cheetah Outreach. Um, a lot of our cats have lived up to 15 to 16 years. Uh, Joe is 12 years, and we know he's going to definitely live longer than that. So, I, at home, I feed my kitty like tuna. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you feed big uh, cheetahs? Meat, just 100% meat. Um, we feed a combination of chicken, turkey, and then a lean red meat to our cats. So Joseph here, however, is allergic to chicken and turkey. Oh. So, he gets pork. Oh. And very lean pork. And what is the feeding process like when you have to feed them um, in captivity? It's yes cut up food in a bowl and they all know they sit for their food. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's eyeing you out, Sam. I he's think, eyeing, he, I think he's, he's interested in you. I think he thinks that I, I'm pork or something. I did say he eats lean, lean meat. <laughs> oh, so the skinnier you are, the more, the more excited you are for it. It's so exciting to have Joseph in the building. Thank you so much for bringing him with us and to share this good news about mm -hmm. what we can do as South Africans to, to conserve this beautiful, beautiful creature. So, Joseph, thank you for joining us in the building and thank you to you two for coming to share this with us on H9. Good right to pick now. commercial break. Yes, right now we're going to go for a quick commercial break. We should see you after this.